the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, why am I a Christian? That's a common question. Some of the Christians do not know why they are Christians. Some of them were born as Christians. And even for some of those who believe in Christ, they cannot answer this common question, this logic question, why am I a Christian? Simply because God of Christians is the perfect God. I cannot believe in any God but Christ. Simply because I cannot believe in, in a God like an idea or materialistic thing. Being a smart man, a smart being, God should be smarter. God should be a person so I can deal with him. And he is very smart because he created things. So I cannot believe that these very much organized creatures are there without a creator, a designer. And this creator and a designer should prove himself. He is a person. He is a smart being. So speaking about Christ, in the words of Christians, at God incarnate, so God revealed himself in Christ. God showed men who is God by being Christ, Jesus Christ. So I think that's the very reasonable God I can follow. Also, God of Christians is the almighty God, the one who can control everything, the one who can do everything. And also, he is the God of the wisdom. He is doing everything wisely. He always have a reason behind anything in this life. So I should follow a reasonable God, a wise God, a mighty God, and overall, God of Christians is God of love. God is love. So the loving God, I need him because I need to be loved. I need to be cared for. I, I know my weaknesses. So I need this mighty God to be on my side, to care for me and to follow me up in my life and to save me from all the problems. So God of Christian is the loving God, the mighty God, the wise God, and he is not an idea, he is a person. Also, when you study the idea of God in the New Testament of Christians, Christ himself gave us a parable about an, a father and two children. One of them was very bad. He disobeyed his father. He took all the fortune of his father and went astray away from the house of his father. But being a loving father, a forgiving father, when it comes to this, this guy, you know, he lost everything. When he came back asking for forgiveness, he was very much welcomed. And his father showed him uh, his love, his care, his forgiveness. So I need this God, the one who can forgive me for all my sinful life. And also the other son, the older son, wasn't that polite. And he did not love his brother. He could not forgive his brother. So the father went out of the house in order to help him to love his brother and to forgive him. So this loving father, I think that's the perfect picture of God. And I can see the love of God in the nature. I can see the love of God in myself. I love to love. I love to be loved. I love everyone. I love all creatures. So definitely the source of this life, love in my life, is not mine. So he is love and he gave me this love to live in love. So when you study gods everywhere in all other cults and ideas, you cannot see this loving God and mighty God. You can see like God is the controller, just a controller. You can see God is like only a judge. 
you can see God humiliating people. God is proud of himself. So the mighty God, but with no love, I cannot follow any of these gods because I do not see these virtues in myself. I seek perfection. So I cannot find this perfect model except in my Lord Jesus Christ. That's why um, St. John, one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, he spoke about God, the incarnate God. He said it this way, that what, which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. So in order to know God, God came to our land. God became a man. So we can see him. We can hear him. We can touch him. We can follow him. Now we understand God through his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the logos of God. He is the only begotten son of God. He is God of God, true God of true God, true light of true light. So it's accepted by my logic that this is the real God. Also, when God became man, he gave me the perfect model of a man. I could see in history all good men, many models of good men, but none of them could be perfect. None of men lived their life perfectly in a perfect way, in a, in a completed way. But for Christ, he was the perfect man. He was not only the perfect God, he is not the perfect God only, he is also the perfect man. When he came to our land, he was born of a poor mother, our Lady Virgin St. Mary. And he showed us the image of God, the perfect image of God, because we believe that we were created on his image. But this image was distorted because of us, because of our free will. Now we can relate to this perfect image of Christ. Being the perfect man, now we can look up to him to see how to live our life in the perfect way. He never ever did any bad thing to anyone. He had no lies, no sins in his life. He loved everyone, even his enemies. He came for the sake of people, not to enjoy his life. He lived the perfect model of a loving life. So he showed us the way, the way to enjoy this life and to live it in abundance and the way to eternal life through him, because he is God of eternity. He is real God, so he will live forever. And for those who stick to him, they will go with him to his kingdom, to the kingdom of heaven. So, when you look around, you can see many pictures of men. People may believe that men are like animals evoluted stage of animal, okay? Others may look to men like chemicals, like, you know, solid things or materialistic things, like being full of desires and, and lusts. But this is not the real man. And I'm not happy with these ideas. I can see good things in my life. I can relate to this Jesus Christ much more I relate to any other ideas, you know, um, offered in this life. So Christ showed himself as a real God and a real man. The Son of God, the Son of Man. One person, one will. Perfect God and perfect man. And he came to save me. Because I have a problem. I do not want to die forever. I do not want to do bad things, but I cannot help it myself. I cannot do it my own way. 
I cannot live my mission without guidance. I need a powerful God to help me, a loving God to care for me and to forgive my sins and to empower me with his strength in order to live a perfect life. That's exactly our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he proclaimed himself, I am, he spoke it this way, I am the light of the world, I am the way, the truth, the life, I am the resurrection and the life forever, I am the good shepherd, I am the door. So speaking about himself as the only one who can save humanity. And he showed it uh, his way. He was crucified by the hands of devilish people. And he rose from the dead with his power as God. So he can deliver the power of resurrection to his followers. And he ascended to heaven because he is not only a man, he is also God. And he promised his people to rise from the dead and to ascend with him to heaven, to start the kingdom of heaven and the eternal life. I cannot see any other God who offered me this. And he proved to be a real God except my Lord Jesus Christ. Also, following Christ, making me happy. Because when I follow Christ, I find the meaning. I find the value. I find um, a mission in life. I find the power of love in myself. I couldn't see it before Christ. But when I come closer to Christ, I can see myself in a different way. I can help others. I can have a mission in this life to help everyone to know God and to catch the eternity. Because this life is not eternal. Everyone knows this. Everyone can see the end of this life. What's after this life? The only one who can reveal the secret of the afterlife, the one who rose from the dead. He can speak it in the truth because he is the truth, that there is another life waiting everyone to catch. But you, have, you cannot catch this eternal life without the hands of the Lord himself. Come to stick to Christ, and through him you can gain eternity. So, having Christ in my life, it's not like a religion, it's not like a changing behavior, it's different life, new life. Because I live my life, I can live my life in abundance following Christ. I can enjoy loving everyone. I can see that this life is not my aim, my goal. I have different goal. So I live my life as like him, following him. I'm offering my life as a sacrifice for everyone as exactly as he had done with me and with all humanity. That's why it was written in the Bible, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Speaking about Christianity, we have to speak about the book of Christians, which is the Bible. So the Bible is the perfect book. Because it's not like a theological book. It's not a book of, full of poems or wisdom or stories. It's the book of life. It's the story of man. It's the truth revealed. Because simply, the Bible started by God, the creator, the designer, the loving God who created this nature and created man on his image, man having a free will. Now the story of love started because man did not accept to share God his eternity, his way. Man chose to live away from God. So man chose to die. And all these complications we could see now in life, that's the outcome of the free will of man. Men 
are the main source of wickedness in this life, not God, because our God is the God of goodness. But because of the free will of man, there is evil everywhere. But God is trying to stop this evil without stopping the freedom of men. And that's, you know, not easy for anyone. But because God is wise, he can handle this, showing his love always. But, you know, leaving uh, the chance for men to choose whatever they like. So the books of the Bible, speaking about the same God, you know, the Bible was written by more than 40 authors in more than 1,600 years, but having the same truth, having the same idea of God loving man, always speaking about next life, other life. The goal of God is the salvation of men. So this uh, book is really great book it's not like any book and this book could change the life of millions of people because the words written in this book are inspired by the spirit of god so the words are powerful and can change the mind of men can enlighten the minds to see the truth so because i have the bible i love to be christian because I read many books, but I couldn't see the light except in the Bible. I couldn't see the power, the real power, except in the Bible. So I am Christian because I believe in the real God, the perfect God. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And because I want to live my life in a perfect way. So Christ is the perfect model for me. He is God incarnate. He came to be my good shepherd, so I will follow him. Also having the perfect life in my life, because, you know, I cannot live it by myself. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God given to me, dwelled into my heart. Now I can live my life differently. So having also the Bible, my book for reference, could tell me all what I need. He told me the stories of men and the story of God and the coming story of eternity. And he guided me, the Bible guided me all the time to follow Christ and full of promises. He promised me to, to have this eternity although I'm a sinner because of the grace of forgiveness. So I love to be Christian. And I'm inviting everyone to be Christian, to live the perfect life, to have the perfect God, and to refer to the perfect Bible. May God bless you all. Amen.